Today, we're going over the main reasons why photographers can't grow on social media. You know, it seems like every day more and more photographers express their hatred of social media and I completely understand why. You see, we're told that social media is the ultimate opportunity for creative business acceleration. You know, if you share content to social media, you can gain more clients, you can sell more products, you can gain access to sponsors and collaborations that you dreamed of. But for most photographers, the reality is, you're just shouting into a void. You feel like you're posting your best creative work that you put all this time and energy into and never see those results that are promised from social media. But what if it has nothing to do with your creative skill or your photography? What if it's simply a lack of understanding about how social media actually works? That is what we're going over today. We're gonna to break down exactly how social media works and how you can apply these concepts to your photography to take advantage of everything that social media has to offer. So if you don't know who I am, my name is Evan Ramp. I'm the founder of ModernCreatorMoney.com and this YouTube channel is for creators looking to explore ideas, make money with their camera and live a better creative life. So if that sounds like you, go ahead, hit the subscribe button down below and do me a big favor, hit the thumbs up button on today's video if you find it valuable and big shout out to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. We'll talk about them a little bit later on. Now a very important note before we get into this video, photography is an art form at the end of the day. It is not content, but because this video is written from a hyper social media growth perspective, we are adopting the mindset of a content creator for everything we're talking about in this video. We're trying to optimize every piece of content we make to grow our social media. But if you are an artist and your goal is to express yourself creatively, you don't have to do any of this stuff. Remember, this video is from the perspective of someone trying to grow on social media. And remember also that you can bounce back and forth between the mindset of an artist and a content creator. To do that, you can use the exact system that I use on social media. Sometimes I create pieces of media that I share with my audience with the intention of growing my audience. This is the content creator side of me where I implement everything in today's video. But sometimes I wanna be an artist and I share my best creative work with my audience without the intention of growing. I'm simply trying to share my self-expression. So it's important to understand that you can bounce back and forth between the two, but for the sake of today's video, we're looking at this from a growth perspective. Everything we're doing today is designed to grow your audience, not necessarily express yourself as an artist. So identify where you land, is growth your main goal, is balancing the two your main goal, or is being an artist your goal, and apply this information accordingly. So the first problem photographers have with growing on social media is that your why is wrong. You do not understand the purpose of social media and the purpose of social media content. Social media content has one objective, and that is value contribution. Now, in a second, we're gonna talk about how this value is contributed through social media content. But for now, we're focusing on the mindset around you sharing content to the internet. Most photographers trick themselves into this mindset that they are a true artist. They're simply trying to express themselves and share it online. But if that was your main objective, you would not care about the results of what you were sharing. You would not care about likes, comments, or any type of validation for your work because you would be a true artist. Most photographers are looking to get something from the content they're sharing online. And when they don't receive that feedback that they think they deserve, their ego goes into overdrive and they start saying things like, the algorithm hates me, social media hates me. But in reality, your mindset is off from the start. You are creating media from the perspective of getting something. You are looking to gain something from what you're sharing online rather than giving. Giving is the solution. Contribute with your social media content and allow likes, validation, comments, attention to be the byproduct of the value you're giving. It's just like business. In a business, the more value you provide, the more money you can make in return. When it comes to social media, the more value you provide with your content, the more likes, attention, and validation you receive. So approach content from the perspective of giving rather than getting. And this is probably the biggest mistake I see most 
artists make simply because artists have egos. I'm just like all of you. I think I should be the greatest artist in the world, but I know to get there, I have to give and contribute something rather than just expect it. So give rather than focusing on receiving and you will start seeing some growth in your content. Now, speaking of value delivery, that is the second thing we have to go over, understanding how you can deliver value to receive that attention in return for that value. Now, social media content has three main ways that value is delivered. That is through entertainment value, inspirational value, and educational value. Typically, content is a combination of all three of these things, but an exercise that I like to do is think of each piece of content having an inspiration, educational, and entertainment rank out of 100. And the content that ranks the highest in each one of these categories is typically the content that is shared by people and by algorithms. You can think of an algorithm essentially like another person. You see, when you find something interesting on social media, the reason you find it interesting is because it ranks highly in one or all three of these value contribution categories. For example, let's say you come across a recipe video that is a recipe that's actually implementable into your life. You find it interesting and helpful. This ranks highly in educational value. It's close to 100. But let's say this video is also shot well and there's an entertaining voiceover. You now have an inspirational component as well, as well as an entertainment component because of the voiceover that you found interesting. An algorithm looks at content the exact same way as you. People watch that piece of content for a long time, they engage with it, maybe they share it with one of their friends, and the algorithm is more likely to share that content as well. That is the importance of this value metric. You want to think about your photography in terms of value that you are delivering. So if you're someone who simply wants to share photos online, this is how you would apply it. Let's say you go on a trip to Iceland. Six, seven years ago on Instagram in the early days, you could simply share one of these photos and it would rank very highly in the inspirational value category because at the time people had not seen a lot of Iceland photos. Individual photos of beautiful landscapes were still very inspirational. But as time has gone on and the internet has gotten more saturated, it's more difficult to have that same inspirational value in your individual photos. So to up the inspirational value of your post after you do this trip, rather than sharing just one photo, share 10 photos, have a carousel of images that people can go through, spend more time on your post and increase the inspirational value of that post with a set of cohesive images that are interesting to look at. Now, like I already said, you can combine these value propositions all into one one post. A post doesn't have to be only inspirational. It can be primarily inspirational with some entertainment or education sprinkled in. So in this example, let's say you're posting a carousel of 10 pieces of media. If you want to sprinkle in some educational or some entertainment value, you could include behind the scenes videos in that carousel. So people can get more of an idea of what was happening behind the scenes and they're more entertained by this post. They're staying on it longer and it's deemed more interesting by an algorithm or you can input educational components. Maybe you break down how a photo was made, you include some behind the scenes of your tripod setup with the camera explaining your gear, or you can jump down to the caption and you can explain the process there. The goal here is to look at these three components of value and figure out a way to maximize the value you're delivering with each piece of media that you're sharing online centered around your photography. It's not just your pictures anymore. You can incorporate that entertainment value as well as that educational value to coincide with the inspiration that your photos are providing. Now, before we continue on with this video, I wanna thank today's sponsor, Squarespace, for making this channel possible. Without sponsors like Squarespace, I would not be able to make these videos, and Squarespace is an integral part of my photography business since the beginning. You see, my website, evanramp.com, is hosted on Squarespace, and the reason I love Squarespace is it makes it easy for me to connect with this audience that I'm cultivating on social media. I have my link in my bio where people can go to my website to purchase presets, to contact me, to look at my work, and also I sell prints there occasionally as well. And you can do the same thing. As you begin to cultivate your audience, you can build a website on Squarespace. It's so easy, I built mine in one afternoon. I have multiple tutorials on this channel breaking down how to build websites, but you can do the same thing, have it linked in your bio, and as your audience finds you, you now have opportunities to sell them products, provide them with more value, or simply give them a way to get in contact with you so they can potentially become 
become a client. A website is the easiest starting point for a creative business and no one makes it easier than Squarespace. And one great thing about Squarespace is they allow you to connect with your audience through their email marketing tools. It's something that I implement on my website with a free preset. People go there, get the free value from my preset, they sign up for my mailing list, and now I can connect with them outside of social media. So you can try it out for yourself. Go to squarespace.com slash EvanRamp, build yourself a trial site. You can follow one of those videos that I have linked down below in the description to help you build that site. And when you're ready to sign up, you can use code EvanRamp to save 10% at checkout. That's squarespace.com slash EvanRamp to start a free trial and use code EvanRamp to save 10% when you're ready to check out. Now that leads to problem three photographers have with social media, and that is you lack empathy. You cannot put yourself in the shoes of other people and assess what value you can provide to that group of people. A lot of photographers make the mistake of just sharing all types of creative work on their Instagram and wonder why is their social media not growing. It's not growing because a group of people is not getting any value out of the perspective, knowledge, or experiences that you can provide to them. So when it comes to your social media and growing being the main objective, you have to look at a group of people and create valuable content for that group of people. And to do that, you need to put yourself in the position of someone who is looking for the knowledge, expertise, and information that you can provide. So let's jump back to our last example. If you are someone who is looking to grow an audience on social media around landscape photography and you go to Iceland, what are people who are looking to build careers in landscape photography looking for on the internet? Are they simply looking for inspirational photos? photos or are they looking for insights into how you got into the position that you're in to be able to travel to Iceland and make photography? The answer should be very obvious. So when you craft social media content, yes, share your photography, your creative work, but also think in the mindset of someone who is viewing your content and give them those knowledge, expertise, and information that you have to help them. Give them something. Practice empathy and look for ways to give to a group of people who is interested in the art you're creating outside of just the art being inspirational. Talk about your experiences going to Iceland, how you got there, how you saved up money, what gear you brought with you, how you made certain photos, what went right, what didn't go right. You can craft so many pieces of content based off of the experience of doing this thing that other people are looking to do as well. And that group of other people is your audience. Now, remember, your audience can be broad. It can simply be people who are looking to learn more about photography or extremely narrow like that last example. So problem number four is that your value delivery is not maximized based on the changes to social media in the last few years. You see, most photographers don't like change. This is a very human thing. I completely understand it. But when it comes to delivering your value on social media to a particular group of people, you need to understand that to get that value to them, you need to take advantage of every single tool at your disposal. And sadly, simply just sharing photos is not the easiest way to deliver that value anymore. More. Think of it like this. Is one static photo, maybe even a set of three photos, going to deliver as much value as a 20 second video can? If you're being honest with yourself, the answer is probably no. Now, most photographers look at this introduction of video as a negative, and what you want to do is look at it as a positive. This is an opportunity for you to provide more value to a group of people in a more efficient way around the art you're creating. So, in the past, you might not have been able to share the product process of your photos as easily as you can now. You can create a beautiful set of photos from Iceland and then your following post can be a behind the scenes giving educational value explaining how you created those photos. So you're getting two pieces of media out of one which is more efficient for you and at the same time you're learning how to create effective compelling value delivering media that you can implement into your business as a service that you provide. So it's a win-win for all creators. You're learning a skill that is not just applicable to your photography business, it's applicable to any creative business that you're trying to serve. Now, every time I bring up this concept of taking advantage of video on social media, I met with the same pushback, and that is people saying they don't wanna dance with their camera and be a TikToker to promote their photography. Now, it's important to understand that you don't have to do that. Everyone has their own unique voice, and the goal here is to align your voice and the value you're delivering with whatever your motivation is as a creator. So if you're someone who doesn't want to entertain people, you don't have to. 
You can provide inspiration through the work that you're creating, through the videos that you make. You can provide education through the knowledge that you have and deliver it with the videos that you're creating and not just your photography. And at the end of the day, if you align the delivery of what you're creating online with your motivation as an artist, in a way, you're expressing yourself to grow your audience, which in turn aligns with being a true artist. And that is the beauty of finding out who you are as an artist and creating media that provides value in a way that makes sense to you. You're actually not working because the content you're making to grow becomes an expression of who you are. So I hope y'all enjoyed that one. Like I said, hit the thumbs up if you did, subscribe if you're not yet. And if you wanna work with me one-on-one -on -one and also learn the path that I use to take all this information and knowledge around growing a social media audience and turning it into an actual business, you can check out Modern creativemoney.com. Most of the information in today's video is derived from that course. There's more insights into how to write effective social media content in that course, as well as the path you can use to grow on social media and actually start making money from your audience. Because we all know that followers does not equal dollars and Modern Creative Money teaches you how to turn those followers into an actual business. 